G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now we've all been waiting for this one, haven't we? Yes, the Meng Fokker DR1 triplane. But is it a Wingnut Wings kit? I don't think so. And I'm going to look at the Wingnut Wings Sopwith triplane, the Wingnut Wings D7, which is a Fokker, and the precursor to the triplane was the Fokker E4. So there's similarities in all these planes that basically indicate what the DR1 is all about. So, do the sprues and is the experience of those other kits the same as this men kit? I think not. I'll probably get river counted for it. I don't care. I'm after the facts. Roll the music. <laughs> Let's cut the crap, let's get rid of the hysteria, let's just look at this and see what it is. It's a kit from Meng. It's a Meng box. It's got all the Meng things. It's very Meng, okay? <laughs> Typical Meng indication of AK colours, their drawings, right? It's exactly like any other Meng kit you would get. And that's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong. I like Meng. I have a lot of Meng kits in my stash. I really enjoy them. I've built a number of them. And I really enjoy the Meng experience. It's sort of a better dragon, in my opinion. Okay. But the question is, is it Wingnut Wings? And that's what everybody's on about. Now, this is the new Wingnut No, it's not. This is not Wingnut Wings. This is Meng. Now, okay, I know Wingnut Wings designed the CAD for the parts. But that was all handed to Meng well before it was ever going to be released. Now, I don't know what the story was. Apparently, Wingnut Wings has done some outsourcing in the past. They've got other manufacturers to do a few things for them when they couldn't. Okay, that's fine. That gets done. But obviously, it was kept under the umbrella of Wingnut Wings. The quality was still Wingnut Wings. The presentation of the product was still Wingnut Wings. Now, straight out of the box, that's not a Wingnut Wings kit. That's a Meng kit, okay? Nothing nothing like the quality of Wingnut Wings kit in its presentation, just the box. But let's have a look inside. Now I've repacked this and I've done that deliberately to solve a problem. And when you repack it, you get at least a centimetre to half an inch free space. But when I got this kit, it was jammed right up to the lid because they hadn't packed it correctly. And I'll go through how to do that. The result was, there it is. That floating around in there is the part here, and it's also broken off the sprue there. This whole silly arrangement, which is very un-wingnut wings-like, of having a sort of a silly fragile part like that without lots of protection. If you've seen Wingnut Wings kits, if they have a fragile part, they put tons of sprue gates around it and they protect it. They're very good at that. This isn't. I mean, have a look at the sprue gates. When we compare them side by side shortly with the Wingnut Wing kit, they're not the same. This is not a Wingnut Wings kit. This is Meng. And that's okay for what it is. But this stupid breakage here, which is apparently happening on lots of the kits, the only reason it's happening is unlike mine, where I've put that on top, that's where on top, and I've put the smaller sprues in the middle, right? This bottom sprue, on my bottom or mine, not bottom all of them, they put this one high up in the kit. And the trouble is, this seat is moulded in such a silly way that it's proud. It's rather absurd. It could have been moulded much lower. I mean, why they needed to put the gates there, God, I don't know. It would have been better to have the gates lower, where there would be less chance of um, seeing the fact that you'd have to clean it up. It's a stupid bit of engineering. That's not wingnut wings-like. They don't normally do silly mistakes like that. Their engineering is usually better and more thoughtful. And quite frankly, that is disappointing. Now, that'll be okay on its own. But what they've done is the clever clogs that pack this might just pack chuck sprue on sprue on sprue. And then he put this sprue on and then he put that sprue on. And lo and behold, that seat pushes up against the inside of that wing and it will break off. Now, if they'd even just packed it round that way, you wouldn't have such a problem because the seat is hitting a sprue. It's not actually basically hitting any point where there's an actual gate to a part. 
if they had done what I've done, which is put that offending part in the bottom and then place the smaller sprues in and around that pokey up thing, right? Then, when you put this one on, tons of room. And okay, you're going to say, oh, but they would have moved around because the thing would have been travelling and sliding. Right, we'll shake the living fuck out of this. No, because that bumpy seat will actually hold everything in place. So, points off straight away. Wingnut Wings would never let this happen, okay? A Wingnut Wings kit is delivered perfect. And if there's the slightest problem, they'll replace the sprue. Now, I have heard rumours, Bernard sort of saying that uh, men will replace their sprue. So far, I haven't seen evidence of that maybe they will. Maybe they'll honour the heritage of Wingnut Wings. Bernard also thought the box wasn't as big, okay? So here is an Iron Decker box, all right? Well, it's a little bit shorter, not by much, okay? Probably half a centimetre, you know, a third of an inch, that's all. Width-wise, it's the same. Well, it's actually a tiny bit wider, but only about a couple of millimetre or two. Height of the box with the lid, same. So the Iron Decker really isn't a much more complicated kit. Yeah, this has got three wings, but you see the size of them? These wings are tiny. I mean, you have a look at Iron Decker wings. Right, and look how loose everything is in here for Iron Decker. But it doesn't really matter. Have a look at Iron Decker wings. Huge. Same scale, same manufacturer, same type of, you know, same Fokker. They're both Fokkers. But Iron, Iron Deckers, single wing, monoplane Fokkers, Compared to the triplane, chalk and cheese, the wings are tiny. This kit is very little. Right? The, we build the Iron Decker up, it'll look twice the size of a tiny little Fokker triplane. All right, let's get rid of some bags and let's put some parts side by side and see, okay, is the quality there? Here we have three radial motors. So we're comparing apples with apples, okay? Two of them are wingnut wings, one of them is Meng. Now you can probably tell instantly which one is Meng because it's a different colour. Okay, so okay, the plastic's a different colour. But here's the thing to note. Even if wingnut wings apparently had this outsourced, this is the motor for the triplane, the um, English triplane, the Sopwith. Even if they had it outsourced, notice how similar it is to the sprue for the Iron Decker, which was supposedly made in the house at Wingnut Wings. Okay, there's a family resemblance to them. The thickness of the, the sprues, the thinness of the gates, right? The tiny, fine little gates. There is, a, I mean, the way things are protected here and here, you see how there's multiple points. This is typical Wingnut Wings engineering. Even down to the fineness of these very fragile parts here, which have tiny sprue gates. This is wingnut wings. I mean, look at the tiny sprue gates here for all these little caps for the top of the pistons. And the parts are fairly hollowed out. Everything's fine. And, you know, that's how wingnut wings are engineering. Have a look at the uh, Iron Decker. All right. Having the motor on it, similar sort of thing, multiple sprue points to hold things into place. Okay, um, it's just a look and a way and an engineering for it, and that's how Wingnut Wings typically does it. Okay, they do get their molds done overseas, well, they get their molds pressed overseas, but it's my understanding that all the engineering was done in house. But if I look at the motor for the men kit, it's nothing, nothing like a Wingnut Wings pressing. The gates are thicker, they're, they're more stubborn. Okay, there are plenty of points around there. It's very different in style. It's, it's very different. It's like somebody else did it. All right, it's quite obvious. If you look at it closely, you go, well, that's not the same as that. It's not. The thickness of sprues, the way things are laid out, it's not. It's what I would expect to see in a man kit. So there's a lot of people saying, oh, no, we not Wings did the engineering and they engineered the, the sprues. No, they haven't. No way. If they did, they gave this to the work experience kit. It's not the same. 
That might not be a good thing or a bad thing. It doesn't really matter. But this is all I'm trying to say is, is this a wingnut wings kit? I don't think so. I think it's a men kit. And we should look at it that way. We shouldn't think this is a reiteration of wingnut wings. It's not. They might have been the gestation for it and they might have done the engineering and CAD to start it off. But Meng has finished this. Let's move on. Next thing I want to talk about is fuselage. Now, it's going to be a bit tricky, but this is a Wingnut Wings Iron Decker 4. And Wingnut Wings kits come with their sprues completely sealed. You have to cut them free. Okay, so um, you know if someone has been basically selling you a second-hand kit because the sprues have been cut out. If it's a brand new kit and they're selling it to you for exorbitant bloody prices on eBay, the ransom of a small bloody third world country, well, you'd expect all the sprues to be sealed. You'd expect the instructions to be in a bag, all the rest of it. But anyway, that's another story. Now, that's wing at wings quality. And again, we've got tiny sprue gates. We've got lots of little things that are holding stuff in place. There's extra little blobs and things. Um, gates, external little gates here that um, allow them to make very fine parts. It is very clever. Okay, so the engineering that went into it, typical wing at wings. This is what we expect. This is how they are, and they're lovely. They're really good. Okay, here's the Fokker D R One Staples. It's like a bloody Tamiya kit. Staples. Can't remember if all men kits have staples. Probably. I'd say they would have just followed the usual fashion. I am not a fan of staples near models. Really. I like um, that last Rebel kit that I opened. It had sealable bags, and CMK does it, where the bags have a tiny bit of sticky, a little fold of flapper sticky, so you can reseal them. It's great. Okay, so we'll pull this out. Finally, what do we get? Now, admittedly, it's going to be shorter, okay, so we'll take that into account. It's also rounder. Yeah, 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 we're not looking at those sort of things. We'll look at quality. Okay, well, that sprue gate's not too bad. Oh, these ones are right up and on the body. Does we not wings do that? Well, yeah, but to a smaller extent. Okay, all right. So that's all very similar. The plastic's sort of, I don't know. Certainly not the same. It's not the same plastic. It's not the same feel. Oh, look at him here. We've got um, massive um, injection points. Okay. Sure, you've got some detail here, but you've got all these bloody injection points all over the place. Wing nut wings. Very little of that. The injection points are literally invisible and would disappear with a scrape of the knife or a tiny little sand. Plus, they're all out of the way. The area that you would work in, not to be seen. Again, better engineering. Much better engineering. This kit, not so much. Not so much. It's not the same. It's, it's just visually not the same. It's it's okay. It's not bad with anyone else, you know. But still, there's there's lots of bloody <laughs> injection points here. You're going to have to clean up because they're going to be seen. Well, probably. Who knows? But certainly, it's a bit frustrating. Okay, let's look at wings because we've got wings on here. I'll have to get another sprue for them. The rib tape have been exaggerated from the original, and that's known to be a difference. Flash. Oh, I've never seen flash in a wing at wings kit. Flash along the leading edge of the top wing. Hmm. Interesting. Not so bad there. We've already discussed this little thing here, and I hope I haven't lost that tiny little part that fell off. Well, that'll be a disaster. It'll be around here somewhere. And yeah, this, this bit of stupid engineering here. If you're going to have fragile little parts, you need to have more sprue gates to protect it. Wing nut wings knows that. This is the sprue for my Wingnut Wings Sopwith triplane. Okay, so we can have a look at that. So let's just look at some things. Sprue gates, they're fairly fine. They're fairly good. Flash, none. It's a Wingnut Wings kit. We don't see flash on a Wingnut Wings, at least I haven't. Let me know if you have. I've never seen flash on a Wingnut Wings kit. They're always super clean, super tidy. So. Let's put them side by side and see what we got. It's hard to tell. Different aircraft, 
you know, we're not really we're comparing apples and oranges here. When I'm looking at quality and how things are gated, just different. In fact, the main one has slightly thinner gate joints. But here's something about wingnut wings and the style and the way they design things. You can tell they've done it. There's often curves in the sprue and the circular hole in the middle. That's quite typical of the way the wingnut wings kits that I've seen come out. Okay. This one, no, this is a man kit. And this is how man does it. This is how man would put together a sprue. And I'm afraid you're not going to change my mind on this. I've built man kits. I've built wingnut wings kits. This is a man kit. Might have had some engineering done by wingnut wings originally, but they've taken over and it's now man quality. It's not wingnut wings quality. Let's look at greebles. Wow, bits and pieces. And two similar sprues. Okay, which one's which? Well, it's a bit of a dead giveaway. That's obviously for the dry decker. This is the telltale tail plane. Always has that sort of look. Okay. And interestingly, that's solid. It's not like you can actually, um, you know, make it that the, uh, the flaps are going to be down. Interesting. Uh, that usually doesn't happen in wingnut wings. Normally, you have options that you can adjust your flaps. I don't know if there's other parts. I'll have a look. There may be there's quite a few options for doing an early, a middle, and a late. But that's a bit disappointing. Usually on wingnut wings, every flap is poseable. Hmm. Now, here's the big pop-up seat, the bone of contention here. Okay. Now, I have had a look at this frame, which is from the Fokker D7. And yes, their seat does pop up a bit. Okay, but it's actually molded low and designed so that the sprue, at least it goes to the bottom of the sprue. Now, this one, it's halfway up the bloody sprue before it even starts. And, oh well, it doesn't really matter, it's just a fact of packaging. If you're going to put your parts in your box, mang, don't put it so this will self-destruct those fragile parts on the middle wing. It's very simple, okay? Um, unless you've been getting your packaging done by Amazon. <laughs> well, that's a whole other story, that is. Yeah, go and watch that video. Yeah. There is not a hint of flash anywhere. Everything is beautiful. And this is the thing. Wing Our Wings kits are a joy to behold. They are beautifully engineered. They go together like a dream. The part fits and tolerances are tight. They're exact. You can't put too much paint between parts because that's enough to throw the whole kit out of balance. You must be very precise when you're building it. This is the thing. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. They are the best kits in the world. Well, they were. Okay. So that is what we expect and what we see in a Wingnut Wings kit. And it's lovely. And there are no basically injection points where we're going to see the parts. They, in fact, the injection points that they are, they're so faint, they're on the sides that are going to be hidden. It is well thought out. Well thought out. And the attention to detail is fantastic. Now, man, it's, it's good. It's man quality, which is good. But there's hints of flash here and there. There's a little bit of flash there. A little bit of furriness. It's fairly good. I mean, there's not a lot to complain about. Comparable parts. Sprue gates, huge. Well, not sprue gates, huge. Injection. The injection quality is not the same. But admittedly, at least most of these seem to be on the other side where it won't be seen. So, okay, we'll forgive that. I still don't know why we can't pose our tail plane. Actually, it's very good. All right, I won't whinge and complain here. This part is actually very good. It's very similar to the way Wingnut Wings would do it. In fact, this looks exactly like a Wingnut Wings part, except for a tiny bit of flash and a little, you know. What it is is probably like a poorly moulded Wingnut Wings part. Whoa, get in trouble with that, won't I? Yeah, this is not the quality of moulding, pressing, okay, of Wingnut Wings, but it, this is very close to what I would expect to see in a Wingnut Wings kit. It's good. All right, so it's got that going for it. Okay, stop whinging, Harry. I think, well... Except for the tail plane here. Let's have a look in the kit and see if we get an alternate part for that. There's good news and bad news. Good news, yes, we get an alternate part because there are two different tail planes. 
they don't look quite as different as they should from my memory but um, there are two different tail planes depending on which version that you're doing but um, again you're going to have to cut it out now it probably wouldn't be that hard oh actually it will be that hard because you have got guide horns right there guide horns are molded in they're not even a little pea part that you add which is annoying okay because normally you'd add the guide horns afterwards so you're going to be really careful if you're um resting on this because i know when i did the airfix iron decker and i rested the part down to over sanding i snapped off tiny little guide horns and these are going to be the same sort of issue hmm yes not happy with that so you're going to have to cut through the guide horns you're going to have to cut through these little hinges here and this little spring detail which is rather nice you're going to make a mess of it by the time you're finished you'll probably think why the hell did i even bother trying to pose the bloody tail plane because it's just wrecked my kit maybe now thinness one thing is when our wings kits usually come to absolutely taper thin points on their um their wings well these are pretty good they're pretty good i can't complain there i can't complain about that sprue from ming all right i'll stop my winching that's fairly good that's copper state models quality which is good nothing wrong with copper state model kits they're excellent but what i'm trying to establish here is this is not a wingnut wings kit lower your expectations in fact what i'm about to show you next is going to basically explain the whole reason why this is nothing like a wingnut wings kit this is probably more than 50 percent of the reason why this is not a wingnut wings kit and let's go into that Meng well you get what is typical for Meng a devil sheet and nothing wrong with that okay made in China okay it's not going to be cartograph okay it's not it's not going to be that quality and it's okay um, wouldn't know until we put them on your PE well it's Meng PE it's dirty um, it's got a protective film on there this is the um, the D7 from Wingnut Wings a lot different I mean oh look you know it's PE I feel the Wingnut Wings kits just have more polish that's all I can say all right that's adequate PE. That'll do the job. That'll get the kit made. These decals are okay. They'll get the kit done, right? That's it. But a Wingnut Wings kit is an experience where everything is a joy. I mean, look at the size of that decal sheet, okay? You could have got a great big huge decal sheet with all kinds of options from Ming, but no, you get that pissy little one, okay? You don't get the wow experience. The PE is beautifully done and represented for Wingnut Wings. You'll get quite a few sheets in here. You always do. Oh, admittedly there's lozenge for this one but you just get more you get a much better feeling with wingnut wings it's a it's a hard thing to quantify except that things are bigger bolder brassier better and you just get that feeling it's just like if you're going to buy a bog standard ford it's okay they're good quality these days they're reasonably reliable it's all well and good it's cheap but if you're going to buy a good quality just for a heck BMW, right? I know there's problems with BMW, but let's just say BMW. It's a, it's a lot more money, sure. But there's a huge experience that you get with that. And not just the snobbery value. I've owned BMWs. I've owned Fords. I can talk about this, okay? And the BMWs are beautifully built. You get looked after. You get serviced. You buy a Ford and you're one in many, many, many million and getting service and getting basically anything done special ain't gonna happen okay when you've got a wingnut wings kit you're in a select group you're part of a quality you're part of something that has a lot of pride the whole thing that the mystique behind it with peter jackson that he wanted the kits to be the best in the world because he wanted to build them and this brings me to the manuals now i, I don't know what is going on here in the um, the main one um, I do like this peel and reseal plastic. I wish they'd had that all the way through the kit, but they don't. There's mine, maybe because I bought it from Hong Kong and maybe it's not supposed to be an Australian release one. I've got this whole sort of 
blurby thing here as though you were collecting you know it's sort of like bottom of a cornflake box sort of thing I don't know there's just a whole lot of stuff don't know what that is and I don't care here's my instruction manual yeah it's man it's okay but have you ever seen a wingnut wings manual they are beautiful to behold they're so nicely done big history right even the the the, the sprue maps are really really well done the colors are simple they just give tummy tamia humbrol and master kit but the mixes are all there it's very simple color decal guide we've well, already got them beautiful instructions all the way through showing you how to build the kit photographs all the way through so you've got a hint look at this color photos so you can see exactly what it is you're building and how it should turn out in period photos here of the exact thing wiring diagram oh look it just goes on and on these manuals are absolutely gorgeous people often after they finish building the kit put these manuals on ebay and sell them because people collect them because they're so nice they're so beautiful of course you get lots and lots of large options middle you get three in the main kit but there you go so you get all this lovely stuff okay beautiful drawings or renditions and then you get a blurb at the end where all the people involved in making this kit either you get um, their history and what they're all about you get the pride of the people who put that model together this manual from wingnut wings is testament to it is the best kit in the world okay this is the ming instructions now don't get me wrong these instructions are very good they're fine they do the job I've built man kits. The instructions are easy to follow. I like them. Okay. But it's not wingnut wings. That's all I'm trying to say in this video. Okay. I'm not trying to bag Meng. Meng makes great kits. Okay. But Meng doesn't make wingnut wings kits. And no matter what everyone thinks this is, it might have started out as a wingnut wings kit. It's now a Meng kit. And it has a Meng level of quality. And that's okay. It's still probably the best Fokker DR1 dry decker out there in 130 second scale. Buy it. Great kit, but it's not wingnut wings. Just get that out of your head. Okay, you open it up, and yeah, it's just kind of instructions, really. And they're okay, and you know, it's reasonably easy to follow. It's nowhere near as pretty. We certainly don't get all the references that we do in a wingnut wings kit. Um, you know, you can build it out of this. There's no problem at all. You'll have it built up in no time because it's really not that complicated a kit. I haven't seen any. Um, wiring or rigging diagrams there's bugger all for this was there any back here don't think so no, no. so if you want to know how to rig this <laughs> you um, download the wing at wings manual for some of the other planes <laughs> well actually a DL1 doesn't have much at all it has a, a little bit of rigging around the um, carbon struts it has a bit of a couple of cross braces here um, down at the um, the wheels and a little aerofoil there from the wheels and it has some um, just some lines running well actually there there's not so much rigging lines as um, control cables running to the rear and that's about it yep yeah, they give you sprues they give you things it's, 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 you know, it's good but it is man it's man the colors and the layout for here are very good no problem at all nothing wrong with that okay it's good it is good but it's not wing wings it's nothing like it this is nothing like the wing wings experience and then we get here to the end where basically there are your colors and you've got them in ak okay so it's it's not much of a variety you've just got ak and somehow you've got to try and match ak to whatever you've got all right so yes limited now to sum up the parts aren't bad they're not pressed as well they're certainly not the same quality level or attention to quality hence broken parts hence flash hence just a an overall feeling of you know a little excess on the uh, injection points and all the rest of it it's just not there it's good i mean if we got this from um, edward we'd say it's a great kit okay no problem at all if Meng had just brought this out by themselves admittedly they would always be compared to wingnut wings but as wingnut wings always swore they'd never make a dry decker that's what they said they're only going to make unusual aircraft so 
this this plane is lucky that it ever came out or was going to come out by wing nut wings because they said they weren't going to do it. So the fact that we've got it now from Meng after everything's happened is a miracle and it's terrific. Go out and buy this kit then. It's good. Okay? But don't think you're going to get a wing nut wings kit. It's nothing like experience. The box is not the same. The instructions are not the same. The quality is not the same. It's still good. It's very good. But it's not the best kit in the world. That's all I'm saying. All right, no doubt there will be quite a lot of comment on this video, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody. But remember, the premise of this video is, is this a wingnut wings kit? No, it's a man kit. And if you comment and you say anything otherwise, I'll probably just ignore you. Stay on topic. It's a man kit. If we talk about it as a man kit, it is true. All right, if you think this is a wingnut wings kit, <laughs> sorry, you're a drongo. And that's all I've got to say. All right, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.